My first guest is a five-time Grammy-winning recording artist whose life is a whole world away, you might say, from her humble upbringing in Inglewood, California. Today, Erica Campbell has sold millions of albums, both as a solo performer and as part of the iconic gospel duo, Mary Mary, with her sister, <laughs> Tina. And last month, her career took her to one of the pinnacles for any performer singing to a global audience of millions at the Super Bowl. Big moment there, but while the audience was blown away by Mary Mary's rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing, it was actually interesting, Erica's recent weight loss journey that got a lot of attention. The day after her Instagram feed was filled with fire emojis, heart emojis, people asking how, and one fan simply writing, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Do I have a personal mantra for my weight loss? No, and that's probably why it was always so all over the place, because I wasn't dedicated to myself. Am I great at any weight? Absolutely, but if you're trying to get somewhere, you've gotta do something, and I had spent way too much time at the weight that I didn't like, which actually was 184, and I had never been that heavy in my life. If I can be honest, I've just been chunky for a minute. I've just been chunky for a while. I can't fully blame the pandemic. I was eating before the pandemic. I knew not only was the Super Bowl coming, but I knew I had new music. So I made a commitment to changing my diet, to working out even when I didn't feel like it. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna do the squats and the lunges and all the things that go with working out that we don't necessarily enjoy, but they give us the benefits that we want. And so even in the process, I'll be like, yes, Erica, keep going, you got this. Yes, and she's got this. And if that's not enough, Erica has a new album out September 23rd and is out with an empowering new single called Positive. Please welcome the fabulous Erica Campbell! Yes! Oh, wow! Listen! Oh, my gosh, you look beautiful, huh? Thank you, thank oh you. Oh, my gosh, give it up! Hello. <laughs> Have a seat. Yes. Looking like the most beautiful matrix Thank ever. Thank you. How Thank are you. you? I'm well. I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm doing even better because, I, as I wrote to you in the card, I'm blessed because you're here again. I always love seeing you and talking to you. Of course, I was watching um, the Super Bowl like everyone else, and I was listening to The Voice. Next thing I know, I go on your social media, and everybody <laughs> is asking about the yeah. look and the yeah. transformation. Yeah. And I knew there was a deep story behind it. It's all kind of dovetails with the song. It did, it did. You know, um, I tell people that I wrote the song during the pandemic while I was still not sure of what was going on, what was coming, um, when I was gonna sing again, when I'd sing in front of an audience again. Mm. And so when your life has been this one thing for so long, um, it kind of shakes you. And um, the only way to change that is to make a decision. And so I made a decision. Even before I knew that the Super Bowl was coming, I was like, you know, I just wanna change some things. So I'm going to change some things within my mind and within my body. Yeah. And um, what you guys saw at the Super Bowl was the result and the response was great. Did you know we were all going, oh! React that way, because that's you know, it. There was a collective Tamron. like, ooh, she looked good. Let me tell the truth, Tamron, I felt cute. Listen. <laughs> yes. I wasn't that surprised. Yes! <laughs> I love it. Um, you tweeted out, I don't want to lose weight because I'm in the public eye, but because I want to live for me and my family and to honor the life God has given me. Absolutely. You only get one. Mm. You can't go to the lung store and pick up another set because you didn't treat this one good, right? Yeah. And a lot of times, the problem is what we put in our body. And so we've have, we have to build up our discipline because it's hard when you like certain things, but there's a lot of reasons. There's emotional eating, there's depression and mental issues that cause you to make wrong choices. And so you really have to spend some time in prayer and meditation and really decide to do better and then do the research to learn what to eat because yeah. it's hard to break those habits, right? Yeah. You've got to clean out your cabinet. How'd you do it? Well, first I started fasting because I needed to get my mind right. And yeah. that's what I do when I'm going to get right. I literally water fast for 24 hours. Well, I actually water fast for three days. Wow. Um, it Is that for to... religious reasons too? Because, you know, both. people often say fast and pray. Yes, both. So spiritually, it's great. But physically for your body, your body is supposed to detox and yeah. get all the junk out. And we just keep piling more stuff on. We eat so, so much in American culture. So I made a decision. And even when I was cooking for my family, I was like, um, you guys, we're going to have salad tonight. 
Or if I make tacos, I'll put spinach in it. Or I'll blend up some squash in the spaghetti if I'm right. making it. I'll just try to do different things. To, so, because I need them to be aware as well. Right, because you know? the last time you were on, we were talking about Krista, your daughter's mm -hmm. body image yes. and self-esteem image. And yes. you've been so open with her journey. And so, of course, as a mom, you're trying to build her self-esteem but she's seeing life absolutely. through your lens as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm her mirror. Yeah. You know, she'll watch me. If I'm talking about, oh, I'm so fat and I'm so this, then she's going to do that. Yeah. But if I love myself, I'll teach her how to love herself. She's 17 and about to go off to college. So I'm hoping for the best. I'm excited and nervous all at the same time. Oh, that's so beautiful. You know, in your video diary, because you are one of my favorite guests for many reasons, but it's because you're so authentic. When you said your weight, mm -hmm. I said, I. I I think maybe three times in my life have I seen a woman come on TV and say their weight. Yeah. It doesn't hold me hostage when I say it. Yeah. Um, and no one else can hold me hostage. Mm -hmm. You know, because people can get really nasty in the comments. You've you never know. talked about it publicly, but was it about 12 years ago that you even decided to look at surgery? I did. I did. And you've never talked about this before. No, I haven't. No. So I did have a surgery. Um, it was lipo, and I was young and really didn't know the process of what you were supposed to do. So I didn't get the lymphatic massages that you're supposed to get. So my body was not pretty. And before I, my body was beautiful before I had, I just gained weight because I had just had my oldest daughter, who's now 17. Um, so I had the surgery. Um, it was really a bad situation. I was in a hotel room bleeding everywhere, and they sent a nurse and some Tylenol. And then I had another baby, so I gained the weight again. So I was like, what was it all for? What was and it? The was there pressure? I mean, I talked to other entertainers and, and, and people just in general, the pressure to, to fit into what people say we should look like, particularly women, to, to take the surgery option. You just had a baby. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that snapback pressure as an entertainer or society? What was it? You know, I don't know that the snapback culture was so much when I had my first daughter, but after my last baby, my daughter Zaya, 12 years ago, absolutely, mm -hmm. people were having mommy makeovers like right after the baby. Um, and I just didn't, at that time, I didn't feel the pressure because I had already gone through this experience that didn't, it gave me results, um, but the process, I'm, I should have just worked out. I mean, was it terrifying to be in that hotel room? There you are. Mm -hmm. Were you thinking, why did I do this? Absolutely. That was the first thought. Like, dang, Erica, you did it before. You got the weight off before. You had great trainers. You changed your diet. You did it before. Why did you choose this? Mm. It seemed like the easier choice. It seemed like the right thing to do. And yeah. right, almost right after, I was like, dang. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I recovered fine. There's still some scars that I don't really care for. Um, but I love me, so it's fine. I'm cute with or without scars. Yes. <laughs> and look at where you are now and the yeah. influence that you're having um, on this whole positive, you know, I love, again, this, this single is positive, yes. your energy is positive, and I think more than ever before, as you know, people need this. Absolutely. People need someone who's saying, listen, there is light there, and your story has always been one of light. Mm -hmm. I mean, here you are, growing up with a nine in the house. 13 in the house, because there were some cousins, too, oh, and a two-bedroom. And... 13 in the house. Oh, You're lot. on the bunk bed singing. Oh, yeah. Saying, I'm about to be a star. Can you, <laughs> this show is about your journey and where it takes you. That little girl on the bunk bed with 13 yeah. people in the house, mm -hmm. how would she describe the journey now? Um, triumphant. Triumphant. Yeah. Ah. My mom and dad, my siblings, my sister, we just decided that this wasn't, this is not what it's going to be. I remember we were young and I was like, dang, we poor. And mm -hmm. Tina said, we're not poor, we just don't have some things. Yeah. And so there's always another side to what you look at. And that's really the power of positive. Yes, I may be sick, but I'm not staying sick forever, yeah. right? Maybe you lost your job, but you didn't lose your resume. You still yeah. got skill. Maybe you lost a relationship. Love didn't die with that relationship. It can happen again. You've got to hope, you've got to believe. You know, COVID tried to take this word from us, mm. the word positive. If you heard positive, it was like, oh my God. But I don't think heaven said that this word is no longer uh, in use, yeah. you know? So let's take back this let's word and be positive. positive. Think it, yeah. I love it. As I said, you just, every time I see this woman, we'll be at an event. I, it's like moth <laughs> the flame because you are the real deal and your heart is so beautiful. Thank you. Inside and out.